Okay, I want to thank everyone for coming down to one of the most beautiful parts of our island, you know, Kapiolani Park at the edge of Waikiki, right at the slopes of Diamond Head, where our 42nd annual Honolulu Marathon is going to be taking place this coming Sunday. We're standing right on the finish line, something I've never experienced, but someday maybe I will. Um, but it, it's, it says a lot about our community. When you think 42 years, this marathon this year is going to have over 31,000 participants, maybe up to 34,000 if we're lucky. We hear our trolley here. Hey guys, aloha. All right. You take care, aloha. <laughs> Alive and well in Waikiki, the aloha spirit. But you, as you can see here, by, think of, by Wednesday, we're gonna be seeing a real uptick in visitors coming into Waikiki. Um, about 16,000 of the participants are from Japan. They'll start arriving now. By the middle of the week, there'll be a lot more, and by, by Friday, we'll be packed. And it brings about $130 million in additional revenue to this island of Oahu in the city and county of Honolulu. That's all really good. But the other incredible thing is that it invites all kinds of people, local folks and people from other parts of the world to come run a marathon in the most beautiful setting you can find with a beautiful blue Pacific, with our Ko'olam mountains and perfect weather. And here's the best part of this marathon. Everyone who runs gets to finish. There's no time cut off, which hey, Caldwell, you went 10 miles, you're out. You know, you, if it takes until the sun goes down, you get to finish. And I think that says a lot about the spirit of us as a people and of, about this marathon. It's about competing with yourself, doing the very best. If you're young and healthy or you're in your 90s and slow, you push yourself. And so it's, it's a really exciting event. And of course, at this uh, marathon, people are concerned sometimes about security. I can remember my first year as mayor, we had the the bombing at the Boston Marathon and the tragic events of that marathon. And people asked, are we prepared? And we came down here and we talked about how we're prepared. And every year since, we've caught in a press conference to talk about what we need to do to be careful. And now with the tragic events in Paris of a couple weeks ago and then the shooting in San Bernardino and the speech by our president last night talking about terrorism, it's something that's on our minds no matter where we go, in large groups or small groups. But I think we're about as prepared as we can be. And here's the really good news. We're about as far away from any other major landmass anywhere in the world. One small island smack dab in the Pacific. I think that because of that, we have additional protection. That the blue continent, the ocean that surrounds us, does protect us from things that occur in other parts of the world. And so I'm very grateful for that. And I'm very grateful for all that, that our security folks have been going to be doing. But before we start, I want to have, ask Dr. Berhal to come up and say a few words. As you know, he's the father of the Honolulu Marathon. Look how young he still looks. I mean, <laughs> he's been doing this a long time, and I think it says something about why we're here today and, you know, his spirit. Doctor, come on up and say a few words. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're very excited to be Marathon Week. Uh, time's going to go very fast here, and the race will be on us on Sunday. Uh, the mayor pointed out some of the numbers of the Honolulu Marathon. It is amazing how many people are actually in the Honolulu Marathon. We're the fourth largest marathon in the United States. If we look at the numbers one, two, and three, it's New York, Chicago, and Boston. And so Honolulu is not that big a city. So in order for us to become this big, of course, we had to be able to bring people from all over the world. And we're fortunate to, to have been able to do that. And it's for the reasons that the mayor cited the beautiful scenery, the ocean, the incredible weather, and really the aloha spirit. It's a very special race. We're continuing to grow. We're actually very excited over the next few years. We believe the marathon has a chance to grow even more in areas such as China. We're actually up in all our other markets, including mainland United States and Europe. So we think the marathon, although it's been around a long time, it's one of the oldest marathons, is still got a long ways to go. So we're very excited about it. One thing we did say at our last planning meeting last week, we talked about the size of the marathon and the economic impact and how fun it is and the malasad is at the finish line and the no time limit. But at the last meeting, we say pretty much what the mayor just said. Now we focus on putting on a safe event. Because at the end of the day, the planning's been done and that's what we focus on on Sunday. 
and we really appreciate the mayor and the police and all the agencies that have come together to ensure the safest possible event on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Really appreciate it. Um, next, we'd like to have Mel Kaku come forward and say a few words. He's the executive director of emergency management. Um, they're on the front line making sure that this marathon is safe as it always has been. Mel, come on up. Thank you. Well, as uh, the mayor has already indicated, uh, we're hoping to make this one of the safest uh, major events uh, that Hono has uh, supported uh, throughout the years. As part of that, we're committed to providing uh, the security surveillance, and we're going to be utilizing the traffic cameras for 45 of our major, major intersections throughout the course of this particular event. As well as that, uh, we're going to be supporting the Honolulu Police Department with uh, members of our staff. In the event that, highly unlikely event that uh, something should happen, we'll be able to respond within a uh, matter of minutes and then activate our EOC. So to the participants, congratulations, and we hope you have a, a safe and secure event. Honolulu ranks as the safest big city in the United States of America. and. A lot of that credit goes to our men and women in blue, Honolulu's finest, the Honolulu Police Department. Um, they keep us safe, which invites many visitors to our shores. Of course, for our local residents, as we go about our daily lives, we're protected by them. And I'd like Captain Gomes to come up and talk about what the Honolulu Police Department is doing in anticipation of one of the largest marathons being held. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, good morning, everyone. The Honolulu Police Department is committed to making the Honolulu Marathon a safe event for everyone this year. Uh, we will be setting up our Department Operations Center at our HPD headquarters, and we commonly refer to it as the dock. The dock will be operational from the early morning hours and will uh, remain open for the duration of the event. A unified Command, comprised of leaders from the various first responder agencies, will monitor the event operations and will be prepared to manage a critical incident uh, should one happen. While there are no credible threats to the event itself, uh, we are asking the public to report any suspicious activity. If you see something, say something. Call 911 or the complaint, uh, marathon complaint line at 792-6630. Again, that number is 792-6630. Thank you. Captain, can you say one? So I just, I want to emphasize that. Um, so many times we see something that we may think doesn't look right. Your gut tells you something. Don't just assume, well, it's probably okay. If you see something, really say something. Call 911. They'll be ready to respond to check it out. And probably in all likelihood, it's nothing. But don't walk away thinking in the back of your mind, maybe I should have said something. Call HPD and they will check it out. Yes. I want to emphasize that we got the board back here. This is not just a, a board to look pretty. We want everyone to follow this. If you see something, say something. Thanks, Mr. Yep, Mayor. thank you. Next, we want to ask Mark Rigg. He's the Director of Emergency Medical Services. As you know, they're out there every day saving lives. And of course, some of us will be pushing ourselves and EMS will be all over the route, making sure that everyone is safe and taken care of. So Mark, come, on, come up and say a few words, thanks. Uh, good morning, everybody. Mark Rigg with the Emergency Services Department. Um, we've had a team in place attending um, a number of meetings to prepare for the Honolulu Marathon. Um, we have a team in place for that day, that particular day. I'm noticing today is rather still. I feel a little bit of humidity. I'm not sure what the weather is going to be like during the event, but the weather can contribute to a lot of heat injuries and a lot of people uh, struggling during the race, and we are there to assist them. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple bullet points for everybody to be aware of. Um, the city and county EMS's primary responsibility is to respond to 911 calls occurring in our communities during the Honolulu Marathon. American Medical Response is the primary responder to 911 calls for the Honolulu Marathon. Uh, this will keep city and county EMS resources more available to respond to 911 calls in our communities surrounding the marathon route. The following are the resources the city has delegated to the Honolulu Marathon for the EMS division. City and County has two ambulances and a rapid response vehicle at staging areas to respond to 911 calls that AMR is unable to respond to. Due to the, um, a city ambulance being closer to the event, 
or uh, they, them having a lack of resources at that particular time. Uh, city and county EMS also has the EMS bus on standby and there's a ma mass casualty incident unit available uh, just in case we have multiple patients. And there's gonna be a mobile command unit at a staging area as well in case of a multiple patient response. Uh, city and county EMS will also have a present presence at the command center at HPD. That's it, thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna ask our chief engineer, Ross Sussamore, to say a few words. He's the head of our division of facility maintenance. And I do wanna call out Ross, you know, he's the guy out there every day enforcing uh, to make sure our sidewalks and, and streets and parks stay open and clean. Um, he's cutting the grass and we're catching up on some of the grass and meals trips, but you drive around Waikiki. It is beautiful. It's green. And, you know, on top of everything else, Ross is also worrying about the Honolulu Marathon. So, Ross, come on and say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks. Good morning. My name is Ross Asamura. I'm the Director and Chief Engineer of the Department of Facility Maintenance. We're continuing to be committed to this event to make sure that it, it has a safe, enjoyable, and successful conclusion. And in doing that, we're going to be continuing to repair potholes along the city streets, along the marathon route, as well as clearing obstructions and anything that could cause a possible hazard to not only the runners, but to other people that are participating in the event. So we'll continue to that end, and we're looking forward to a safe, enjoyable, and successful conclusion again on Sunday. So Russ, if they see a, a pothole along the route, but if they see a pothole anywhere, what's the number they call? Right, potholes can be reported to the Department of Facility Maintenance by calling 768-7777. Our crews conduct pothole patching and repairs island-wide every day, and it, within the last few weeks, we've patched over 2,000 potholes. So it's something that is an ongoing project, but one that we're committed to. If you have any concerns relating to unattended items that may be left causing an obstruction along sidewalks or other public property, other city properties, you can call 768-3585 and our stored property ordinance, sidewalk nuisance ordinance enforcement team will respond to those calls as well. Thank you, Ross. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Um, we'd like to invite Jeannie Ishikawa, the Deputy Director of uh, Parks and Recreation. As you know, we're gonna be finishing here in Kapiolani Park, a park that was given to the people of Hawaii by Queen Kapiolani and her husband, King Kalakaua, it's a great gift. The legacy lives on, and uh, it's a great place to share with our visitors out of town and our local folks when they come and finish the race, of which about 72% of the people enter finish, which is a really high number. So, Jeannie, come on up. Parks Department, we're very excited to be a partner with the Honolulu Marathon and our staff ha you know, has been working with the Honolulu Marathon organization for the last few weeks as they started to get ready with the tents and their permitting process. So everything is moving along real smoothly. On the day of the marathon, we will probably have about 50 staff people uh, coming in and staggered hours to help out as um, they prep and get ready from 2 o'clock in the morning until the kickoff time. The staff will consist of um, groundskeepers and supervisors from the Kapiolani Park staff and Ala Moana because that's the start and end in our parks area. So we're looking forward to that. We also will have our, um, our rear end loaders following the marathon runners as they pick up all the trash of the cups, you know, that are left in the trash bags along the side. They do that because once we get all the bags cleared, the, the roads can be opened, you know, as soon as possible. So it's more convenient and more as a courtesy to the public. So we're ready to help in any way we can. Thank you. Mike Formby here also, but he's uh, with council members. As you know, they're gonna be taking up our rail uh, bill again this coming Wednesday, so he couldn't break away. But he wanted me to ask everyone to be very careful on the marathon day. As you know, there are gonna be street closures, Ala Moana Boulevard, um, coming down King Street, and of course, on Kalana Anoli Highway all the way out and back to, from Hawaii Kai. And we ask people to be patient. You know, it's early in the morning, but it continues into the day, although road lanes will be opened up. And it's just an inconvenience for one day out of every year. And it's a great event. You know, and you think maybe 34,000 people here uh, bringing in the revenue that they do with all of us benefiting, that a little extra patience going a little slower on a day where there shouldn't be much traffic in the morning would be much requested. And so follow HPD's recommendations without their guiding traffic. and. In a way, celebrate with these guys. They're out there pushing themselves to do the very best they can.